What is going on guys? Um, in this video, I want to talk about Garmin's uh, tail light radar, which is the Varia RTL 515, which is right over here, already outside of the box. So I've been using this radar for uh, a few days and uh, I want to give you guys a first impression of the radar before you spend money and buy this radar for your own bike. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about my frustration um, and some of its limitations when it comes to using it for city commute. I commute from uh, Fort Lee, New Jersey to New York City through George Washington Bridge and I mount the radar on back of my folding bike, which is right over here for the commute. And I also try to mount it on my road bike for uh, group riding or solo rides. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? So uh, let's start with the radar itself. So <clears throat> you've probably already saw a whole bunch of other unboxing and review videos of the radar. General impression of the radar is it works fine. It detects moving subjects. So any subject that can be detected uh, with a bounce of the uh, the ultrasound or whatever, the radar <coughs> from the subject back to the radar itself, it detects and calculates the speed of that subject. So most notably, not most notably cars most definitely gets detected. Uh, cyclists for sure. Uh, pedestrians, I'm not sure because it detects the subject that moves towards you. And I doubt when you're riding the bike, the pedestrian was moving fast enough for it to detect that it's actually moving very fast towards you. So most of the time, pedestrians are not detected, you know, by this light. So um, I was commuting on the George Washington Bridge, and that bridge is actually a uh, protected multi-use uh, sidewalk. So I'll show you guys a video footage at the end of the video, but for that sidewalk, when it's protected, it also does not detect the cars from outside of that protected barrier. So the barrier actually works as a divider for the radar to prevent the radar from detecting unnecessary cars going around on the highway outside of the barrier. So that's a good thing. However, once in a while, it will detect a false positive, even if you're inside a protected bridge sidewalk uh, with the barrier on the side uh, separating you and the cars, okay? Um, in the city, uh, it actually detects, I would say the accuracy of detecting cars that's going from behind, coming towards you, um, the accuracy would be around 90%. Sometimes it detects some cars and sometimes the car gets blocked by a bus, so they disappear, uh, but all, almost always any cars that moves very close to you in a fast speed will get detected and you will get an alarm on your Garmin Edge um, computer. And also the, the good thing about the Varia 5.5 is it also got the Bluetooth um, connectivity so you can pair it even with your cell phone or any other cycling computers like the Wahoo Element uh, or the Bolt. Okay, any of those computers works great. The Wahoo it also utilizes that indicator light on the top and on the side uh, to tell you, you know, how fast the car is going and how many cars are, in, uh, you know, behind you, whatever. But I don't have a Wahoo. I only saw the reviews. It looks like it's working perfectly fine. Uh, it says radar disconnected. So I'm going to turn on the radar really quick. <coughs> you press one second to turn the radar on and uh, it will try to connect the light network. <coughs> Excuse me it will try to connect the light and the radar. And it actually takes a little bit for the radar and the light all gets connected to your edge computer. So you need to make sure you have patience uh, when you are turning this on um, to have both the light and the radar connect. Because when you go to the settings, this thing is actually detected um, as, I'll show you guys really quick. So you go to sensors, that's also where you add the radar. You basically just hit add sensor when it's in pairing mode, it takes less than 10 seconds to add the radar unit. But the trick or one thing that you need to know when you first get this into the pairing mode, make sure you choose, if I add a sensor, 
uh, make sure you choose the light for the Varia, uh, Varia 515. Uh, make sure you choose the light and not the radar. The radar is for the 315 that doesn't have a light on top, um, which is gonna cause issues if you choose radar and try to pair the 515 with your Garmin Edge. So make sure you always choose light. It will connect to the light and then the light forms a you know beaming network with the radar. They all work in conjunction. So, and also initial pairing actually takes more than 30 seconds to 45 seconds. I would suggest you wait until the, um, until the sensor are fully paired, which means it's solid. Uh, it shows as a solid you know, color on the screen. So not blinking. If you see it's still blinking, leave it on the page until it's solid. Very, very important. When I first set up the bike, the light, I was impatient. I only clicked, you know, over, I clicked, I paired it and within 10 seconds I quit. And then the light was giving me issues. It's not pairing with the radar or it paired with radar, but it's missing the light. So make sure, make sure very important, wait a full minute for both of those to go solid. Uh, that means it's fully paired and ready to go. Okay. Once it's paired, you'll see this little radar icon, you know, everywhere on the page. Wherever you go, you go to the navigation, it's gonna show up in the navigation. And if you um, go to the, um, let's see, I'll just show you guys. If you go to any other page, any page on here, the light will show up, depending on the left or right, depending on your settings. And that means the radar is on. And when there's cars going by, there's just gonna be little dots on the, on the thing. It's actually pretty accurate when it detects <coughs> the cars moving from you. So again, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you guys a clip of me riding um, the using the Varia uh, in the city so you guys can see how well the radar works, okay? Uh, but some of the issues that I run into, don't get me wrong, I love this light and for sure I'm gonna be keeping it for riding in the groups and riding in the city. However, there are some quite considerable issues that's preventing me from really, really recommending this night light 100%. And that is um, the mounting system. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys on my bike. So this is the actual mount, which is a standard Garmin Edge, you know, mount over here. It's a 90 degree turn mount, and it's got a plastic piece. And on the back, it's a rubber piece adapter. This adapter, forms to different kinds of shapes of the hand of the uh, seat post and you're gonna use some o-rings included to um you know kind of hook this light up to the seat post uh kudos to garmin for including extra adapters to fit to fit different kinds of shapes of seat posts so this one is for the aerial seat post which is really nice really helpful for some giant and trek um road bikes endurance bikes they always use those really weird shaped uh, seat post um, and this one is for more of larger flat area mounting but you basically just put this little rubber piece you know behind the actual plastic adapter and then it's gonna fit onto the seat post but my problem with this is the original o-ring included this is aftermarket o-ring by the way so the original ring included does not have enough clearance for me to get through this really thick folding bike seat post, which is a 33.6 millimeter, I think. So keep in mind the original O-ring right here, includes two O-rings. Those O-rings doesn't fit on the 33 millimeter seat post. So that's a major problem. Luckily, I have many other Garmin Edge uh, mounting, I guess, mounting brackets. So I also got a lot of O-rings that's for other Edge products. <coughs> and one of those O-rings actually fits the size. It's slightly larger than the larger one of the O-ring provided in the box. And I was lucky enough to find two and I kind of secured it on the back of my 33.6 millimeter seat post. And thank God it worked. But right out of the box, if you have a folding bike, you need to get some aftermarket O-rings that's slightly larger than the one provided because this one doesn't fit all the way through on the 33 millimeter seat post. That's one major complaint I have. Um, another complaint is if you ride a road bike and you have a saddlebag, as you can see, you have no place to mount this light. This light cannot go 
here because that's definitely not recommended by Garmin. Garmin says you need to always have it at the highest point, okay? And because the radar, the light is so long, if your seat post is not low enough, that's gonna create another issue because if your seat post is kind of low, your tire blocks most of the radar's views and that's another issue. So you need to make sure that your seat post have plenty of clearance for the radar. If your seat post is really recessed, your bike is fairly large for you, this radar might not work properly because your seat post is so low. There's not enough clearance between the tire and the, the radar's uh, detecting you know, area. So even for mine, it's barely enough over there, okay? So, um, but for my folding bike, obviously no issues because it's got a pretty small wheel. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And the very large, very last, very large major drawback that I really hope Garmin would fix is this freaking thing doesn't have a uh, saddlebag mount. So, of course, everybody's gonna have a saddlebag when they go out, you know, riding solo or riding a group. When you have the saddlebag, there's no freaking place to put this light. That's my major complaint. There's no place here. Uh, maybe someone can print a 3D printed uh, adapter and use it on the saddlebag. But my other lights, a cycle light, actually, I'll just show you guys really quick. Check it out. This is used for saddlebag mount. You simply just put this in the saddlebag and it works instantly for traditional tail lights. For the Varia, uh, no. You need to find a seat post, you need to find a saddlebag clip that has a edge mount to mount this thing. So far I haven't found any. So if you guys have a good recommendation, I'm mounting this on the saddlebag. Please, please let me know in the comment section down below. I would highly appreciate it. Otherwise, this light, definitely worth the investment. Um, MSRP is around $200. If you can get it used or if you get it you know, on sale, that would be a fantastic value for your personal safety because um, I feel like once I added this light and during riding, I feel much, much more safe I feel like I have another pair of eye on back of my head that actually sees exactly how many cars are behind me and um, um, and at and, and what speed they're traveling towards me. So it made my riding um, feel much safer. But that perceived uh, safety, of course, is not um, a replacement for your awareness of the surroundings. <coughs> so I always, I always look back and double check as well. But with the radar and a, I would say 90% plus city, you know, car detection accuracy, um, it's definitely worth the investment. Uh, your life's at stake. So get this piece of equipment, make sure it's more safe for you in the riding and uh, enjoy your ride. Okay. So that concludes uh, this video. If you guys have any questions about this Varia 515 radar, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. And I know I start, you know, I, I got into, I, I got this like one year late after it came out, but I'm, I'm really glad that I got this radar because it just made my writing much safer. Um, so at the end of this uh, video or at end of this conclusion, uh, enjoy the little writing video that I did uh, with the radar uh, mounted on my folding bike and traveling from George Washington Bridge to New York City. Okay, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next.